thank you for coming this evening. Uh, let me tell you what we're going to uh, deal with, and we'll have some time for Q&A afterward. First, you may not realize this, but you are living in a very, very unusual time. Something is transforming our society. The media, such as uh, the local newspaper here, is plumping to make people who have uh, different sexual tastes and desires feel comfortable about themselves. All across the United States, school systems are saying, gee, uh, homosexuals are, uh, are, are feeling bad about themselves. Uh, we can't have that. People should feel good about themselves. And you've just been through a school system in all probability before you got here. And here is also a place in which all kinds of accommodation and so forth are being made to those who engage in what used to be called deviant, uh, disgusting, whatever, sexuality. You're living in this time. And interestingly, this time proves something that is being debated and which our Supreme Court, just a couple of years ago, said was not the case. Our times are proving that homosexuality can be learned. And in fact, you are living in a time when young people, teenagers, and you'll see the data shortly, are being transformed. So much so that there are a new, a million new, homosexual or confused, uh, sexually confused kids now in the United States. That's one million out of 16 million high schoolers. This is going to have a profound effect on public health, a profound effect on the number of babies coming, and oh, by the way, the number of babies being born in the United States hit the low point last year, probably do it again this year, People are not having kids. They're having pets, but they're not having kids. And I'll show you from the data from our most recent election what a profound effect this is having. If you looked at the United States as a collection of approximately 51 countries, you would see that about half the countries in the United States are dying. And you'll see that not quite half are pushing ahead and having enough kids to sustain themselves. And if you look across the world, what we call the West, we are in a birth dearth, and it's getting worse, not better. And I want to argue with you, because you're Republicans, or at least most of you are, I guess, that not only are you on the right side, but you better do something about getting this society excited about having kids. Because no matter what you think you own, no matter what you think your trajectory is, as far as what you want to get as a, a career and so forth, if there aren't enough kids coming behind you, you're going to get to be my age, and I'm really old. And there ain't going to be very many people paying your stipend. And when it comes to your kids, they might not have it. So, actually, you're going to get some information tonight that I don't think you're going to get anywhere else at the university. And you're going to have to deal with this because this is going to impact your life. First, will homosexuality's rapid rise among youth ruin Trump's plans. I think there's a good chance that even if Trump gets an eight-year stint, which he probably will, most presidents get that, by the end of his term, he's going to be, and the United States is going to be, in a significant slump because there aren't kids, enough kids, being born. And I want to persuade you, as you look at the data, that this is something that really ought to concern you. Uh, 
is homosexuality learned? Our Supreme Court, just a couple of years ago, in the decision regarding gay marriage, said, no, this is something immutable. This is something with which people are born. This is something that is warp and woof of who they are. Well, actually, down through the centuries, most people believe it was learned. That is, if you, if you think of other preferences, food, art, sex, we all used to think this is learned. And when it comes to drugs, everybody thinks that's true. Everybody today still thinks nobody is born a druggie. They think, I don't want a kid going to school and learning about drugs learning how to shoot them and how much fun it can be and how many famous people have uh, had drugs and how many people have had drugs and it's never messed up their life and so forth. I don't want that. I don't want that for my kids. Why? Because that, at least, we believe in unison, that's something that a kid who you never know when his ears are open or her eyes are open might fixate on and say, my teacher said, I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah. And that's the way it used to be with all these preferences. Homosexuality was regarded as different. Different in this sense. Most of the people in here are guys. Guys, as you're probably aware, we're a bit different when it comes to sex. That is, we are extremely vulnerable. Yeah, I know, we're tough and we play hard and all that kind of stuff. But guys are unusual in this respect, that the first sexual experience they have is often very, very influential for the rest of their lives. When they have a good time sexually, whatever time that is, often that's kind of quasi-imprinted. And you will see, you can pick up any paper, look on the internet. Some guys do something and it's fun. And so they get arrested for doing that later on when they're not a kid. Like recently, you probably were aware, we have a, a situation where some guy in Scotland was arrested for making love to a tree. And another guy in Scotland, I don't know what's wrong with the Scots, uh, but he was arrested for making love to the sidewalk. Uh, another guy was arrested, at this time in France, for making love to a fence. And I could go on, even here in the United States, I've had clients that have done some pretty weird things, although I chose these because they're pretty strange. Guys are extremely vulnerable, and this has been known for a long time. Um, that is it's such a long time that if you look at like Christian literature, like the teachings of the Twelve Apostles, probably written in the first century, maybe early in the second, uh, it talked about how important it was not to corrupt boys, not girls. Girls, generally, not always. Some gals get really strange sexual tastes. But generally speaking, women tend to be irrational about sexuality. Guys, not so. And we have a former MP in here, and he probably arrested guys for doing some pretty strange things. Yes? Sometimes in a desert field or in a bunker. Yep. 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 And um, so this is what common sense, common opinion. The American Psychological Association has argued since about 74 and a little bit before that. No, this is not the case. People are, it's part of who they are. It, the implication is people are born with that particular set of sexual preferences or a strong tilt in that way and uh, should not be changed just today. The, uh, the legislature here in Colorado was voting on whether or not it would be forbidden 
to try and dissuade a kid from going into homosexuality. I don't know how that turned out, but it we'll passed. Know. It passed? In the House. Okay, we'll see what the Senate does. And then the second thing, if this is all true, doesn't necessarily follow, but the American Psychological Association passed a resolution in 74 that said that homosexuality is healthy and normal. It is as socially and personally beneficial as heterosexuality. Wow, is that true? Yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Whoops, what did I do? What did I do? IT specialist. IT. I must admit. Does anybody know how to undo <laughs> this? It's <laughs> here. I must be the wrong one. Thank you for IT specialist. Oh, Make sure he gets a uh, uh, extra shirt. <laughs> Have a shirt. Okay. <laughs> uh, the United States uh, government, the federal government, has been doing some very elaborate uh, surveying of high school students. And they have come up with a finding that is shocking. In fact, so shocking that they've never mentioned it. They have published, I'll give them that, that you can figure out what has happened. But over the past 25 years, um, many, many tens of thousands of high school kids have been asked about various, ex uh, various uh, sexual experiences, whether or not they took drugs, whether or not they got in a fight at school. You'll see some of the questions. When they started this in 1991, the federal government said, my goodness, the American Psychological Association, all of the bright, bright people say homosexuality, heterosexuality. What difference does it make? But it makes a tremendous difference if you're a high school kid. It turned out that in 1991, if you compare kids who said, I only have heterosexual sex, or kids who called themselves heterosexual or straight versus those who were twisted a whatever you want to call it. Uh, interestingly, those who were gay, those who were confused about their sexuality, were two to three times more apt to, wow, take drugs, shoot drugs, uh, try to commit suicide, claim they were thinking about suicide. Um, we don't know for sure whether they actually killed themselves because it's very hard to interview dead people. But they, we did find out that this was a persistent pattern over the whole panoply of questions that were asked. And so you can find this out, and the government did. And at that time, the Centers for Disease Control, remember AIDS was primarily the, the, the engine that was making the, the CDC rich and famous. Um, at that time, they had a lot of contact with the, the gay activists. At that time, many people in the CDC uh, came out as themselves, homosexual. And the CDC had kind of a choice point there. If kids into homosexuality are far more apt to be mentally distressed, far more apt to say they want to commit suicide, tried it, blah, 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 all these things, should we try, A, discourage people from going into homosexuality, or B, mm, focus on kids who were homosexual or confused and say to other kids, don't discriminate against homosexuality. In fact, think of them as kind of people that are observing the kinds of protections that we give to people with civil rights. These are people that ought to be especially cared for. Teachers ought to encourage gay straight clubs. Teachers ought to have units where kids are taught that homosexuality is good. And of course, our largest state, California, has mandated that starting in kindergarten, all children will learn that homosexuality is just as good 
and just as healthy as heterosexuality. In 1978, I wrote a fairly influential piece in which I argued that if a society were foolish enough to give as much credence to a kid becoming homosexual as heterosexual, that homosexuality would start to predominate. That homosexuality is so much easier to get into and has so many fewer rules that need to be followed that homosexuality will overwhelm heterosexuality. I didn't know how long it would take, and tonight you're going to see that it takes a whole lot uh, less time than I thought initially. So let's look. These are hundreds of thousands of kids. So we're talking about a gargantuan amount of data. Now kids don't always tell you the truth. This is a questionnaire they fill out in class, and you know and I know. Uh, some kids just fool around, other kids exaggerate, other kids have a good time. But we hope that kids will be just like adults. That is, it's easier to tell the truth, we hope they will. That's the data. Nobody knows for sure what the kids do. All we know is what the kids say they did. All we know for sure is what they responded. But here's the change. Enormous sample, 2001 through 2009, and what has been your sexual behavior ever? Turns out, almost 56% of kids said, I've had heterosexual sex. At the same time, about 6% of the kids said they never had homosexual sex. This is ever, two, five, seven, ten year old, you know. And at this time, just a decade ago, heterosexuality was ten times more prevalent than homosexuality among the nation's youth. Let's go to last year, excuse me, 2015. We're now looking at about 16, about 16 million high school kids here in the United States. Opposite sex only, 45%. Hmm, that's interesting. Kids, kids today are less interested in the opposite sex than before. Hmm, just surveyed, made the news yesterday, I think it was, that adults, Married people and so forth, they're having less sex too. I don't know, I don't know if that's related. Maybe it is. 8% of kids said they'd had homosexual sex. And suddenly, what was a 10 to 1 ratio is now down to actually a little bit worse than 6 to 1. What does this mean? That in just about a decade, with strong uh, input from Hollywood, as one of our favorite actresses, Elizabeth Taylor, said, without gays, there is no Hollywood. And if you looked at, for instance, uh, the Disney empire, even uh, in the late uh, 60s, 70s, uh, probably you had at least 25% in the Disney studio who were gay. The last figure I saw, about eight years old now, uh, indicated at least 40%. But Disney has been, as you may have noticed from the news reports, dropping homosexuality increasingly into 